Today my guest is the respected Mr. Jarosław Jurszkiewicz. Uh, good morning, Jarosław. Good day. I am seldom referred to as distinguished. I hope it's not because of my age. Thank you very much for the invitation. There's no need to thank, but I thank you for accepting the invitation. For those who might not know, especially uh, for non-Polish speakers, Jarosław Jurszkiewicz is the main Polish Google Maps. He is an academic lecturer, a lecturer, a radio journalist, owner of the Voice Coaches brand, and very importantly, the press spokesperson for the Silesian Planetarium. Yes, this is the institution I've been associated with for almost a quarter of a century. And that's one of the reasons why we're meeting. I hope it's not the last time. Speaking generally, we want to talk about space today. So, um, exactly in our project, we say the future is now. Jaroslav, I recently read in many places, and not from one wise man, that thanks to telescopes, and perhaps we can most often hear about two of them, namely the Hubble telescope and the Webb telescope, we, we look into space, but in fact we look into the past and we look into the future. Yes, that's true. I did the third telescope, which, uh, if you allow me to mention, is this latest uh, Euclid telescope, which is searching for dark matter and energy. But indeed, every space telescope that is sent into space causes, they have made a certain breakthrough in knowledge at our place when it comes to the Hubble telescope is indeed the first time we looked into such a deep universe and we could see objects distant by 11 billion years from the excellent ones, that is. In fact, uh, we've looked into a large chunk of the universe's history and uh, here, is, here is a question that often comes up and really stimulates the imagination. The distances in the universe are so great that light, that is electromagnetic waves because light belongs to them. Because they need a lot of time to cover a lot of distance. I always give such a simple example. There's Voyager 1 which left the Earth, uh, which left uh, the solar system in 1977, is now 22 light hours away from us. That's how long it takes to travel the distance electromagnetic of this time and the nearest star is four light years away and we're talking about a very close backyard so we are actually looking at objects that might not even exist anymore might not exist yet their light still reaches us i may joke a bit but can it also mean assuming there are alien civilizations that we take this uh, civilization into account if we also consider these issues related to security that we can actually see it too late perhaps aliens have already been with us and uh, we didn't see it and they flew away there's such a possibility because communication between civilizations using radio waves or any other electromagnetic waves is highly flawed let's say we discover even on Proxima Centauri, that is uh, these four light years I mentioned, civilization, then what? We send them a signal, we say good morning, four years. Uh, this signal is running, they decode it for a year, and for the next four years, this signal is running to us. They ask, they also say good morning, nine years have passed if we take this year for decoding information. So this is it, well it can be, I know the vision you're talking about uh, when uh, an interstellar cruiser emerges. Well yes of course, but I think uh, the laws of physics in the universe are the same everywhere. So aliens are also subject to the laws of physics, meaning that electromagnetic waves, magnetic fields run very long. So after those two angles, I still have to ask you because of course uh, looking into the past we mainly talk about science science popularizes, right? Uh, since we are looking into the past, we are watching what was there. Uh, how does it empower us to do so? Uh, to be able to draw conclusions about what will be. And really, that's what I want to ask you here. Do you believe in this alien civilization yourself that some forms of life exist in the universe because after all these telescopes are looking at black holes of course they are a bit different forms life might exist there it's difficult but foreign galaxies their multitude diversity uh, our brain cannot comprehend how big it is that's why we entrusted to artificial intelligence which will analyze the shape 
the first uh, stage of development of different galaxies out of billions that this system will observe and analyze. And uh, by looking at uh, various stages of star life, the development of galaxies, their various shapes, we are able to draw certain regularities. That's about uh, looking into the future. Yes, by analyzing what was in the past, we can predict what will be in the future. However, when it comes to life in the universe, an astronomer who half a century ago would have said that he believes in it, e.g. that there are planets outside the solar system, and uh, God forbid there is life somewhere maybe in the solar system, it would be ridiculous. Meanwhile, the last 10 years have truly shown us that uh, water, which is necessary for life, is one of the most common chemical compounds in the solar system. We find it almost everywhere. We find deposits of water ice on the moon. We find uh, literally gigantic ice deposits on the equator last week. Under the Earth on Mars, and this water is obviously frozen. It would fill the Red Sea. Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons. The biggest geysers in the solar system are water. And finally, Europe and the second moon of Jupiter Callisto with a nice crust under which there is probably water, perhaps warm. So uh, what astronomers used to say, no, there is no life in the solar system may not be true, but I will say right away. Let's say it's not about uh, Martians, it's not about technologically advanced civilizations because we know for sure that there are none in the solar system, but I'm convinced that there are some simple we will find a form of life different than on Earth. Well, because you talk about warmth, you talk about water, you probably go towards maybe our Earth's atmosphere, that is air, but perhaps these uh, civilizations don't really need oxygen. It may not be necessary, meaning we know for sure that oxygen is not absolutely necessary for life because there are anaerobic bacteria on Earth. And you, from your area of knowledge, know well that uh, anaerobes are very dangerous in case of infections. But uh, yes, I believe that life could exist in a completely different form, not necessarily protein-based. Does protein have to be the only DNA carrier in our... Understanding life isn't necessarily the case. We can imagine other forms of life, but uh, some, as I say, we can imagine them. If we do not find an effective form of communication, you mentioned black holes. Here is perhaps some hope for travel. This is already star language. Overcoming distances. The movie Interstellar shows it quite sensibly. Although we're still talking about theoretical physics, such contact may occur, but not soon. I think it's worth disconnecting from everything that is a threat in our lives today and uh, look at the sky. Let's loosen up a bit what's going on in our heads. Uh, Yes, you mentioned the telescopes, you started our conversation from space telescopes and maybe let's finish on that because there is such a telescope or there was such a telescope, Kepler, which observed a very tiny fragment of the sky. It was like a keyhole and it looked for star eclipses. It means places where there might be planets orbiting those stars. He found a thousand of them. Thousands. But uh, in our galaxy, there are more planets than stars. On average, 2.5 planets per star. A star, so what astronomers said half a century ago, that didn't turn out to be true. Planets, they are something completely normal, and stars without planets are abnormal. So from the probability calculation, we probably are not alone. Is the future now? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jarek, thank you for being our guest. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jaroslaw Yuskevich, a voice coach and press spokesperson for the Silesian Planetarium, is before you. Goron, very nice. Deeply. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.